It was always a shabby, funny town when I was small. Its only claim to fame, I suppose, was the river, which ebbed and flowed in muddy brown and grey regularity, providing an ever-changing picture of dreams for the eyes of the young and the old, or the idle, to dwell upon. It was always a strange little sprawling town, with nothing at all of importance to merit a place in the shape of things to come. Here it nestled, like a favourite comfortable patchwork shawl, the fringes of which tapered towards the creeks of Slades Green and Crayford, dwelling a moment at Bexley and Welling, crossing to Bedenwell and Bostel, Beneath the folds haphazardly tumbled Northumberland Heath, with Upper and Lower Belvedere here and Barnhurst there, in between glowing a patch or two of changing green as the woods and parks filtered through the embroidery of stitches that held it together with fields and ditches, eventually sweeping around and down past Abbey Wood Marshes and back to the river. It was always a friendly, squat little town, with industry forming a warming collar around its neck. The ribbon of water wandering by firmly held it in place, loosely tying a flexible knot of strength against the fogs and mists of all that threatened the pattern of sleeping security. Quickly, quickly, write it down before those that remember have long been forgotten, with nothing to show and no one to know how reshaping and raping could possibly happen, and why such a garment lies in tatters, threadbare and worn, and all that matters is sadly forlorn and desolate now, abandoned, exhausted, and those that permitted such devastation have gone, long gone, moved on. Just for a moment, indulge in nostalgia. Name a few names for memory to conjure. The magic that hustled and bustled under the Harlequin cloak before the plunder of planning and banning and closing tore the patches asunder. The causeway of old, with convenient railings on which you could lean to gossip and yarn and gaze on a scene of rocks and mud and pools of water in which you could paddle when the tide was out, with wages to swim to the other side of the river. There was even sand for children to dabble. Piers and jetties, chains and things, wet warm timbers, ropes and rings which held the dinghies and yachts and boats, boys and floats bobbing when the tide was in. The fat black barges gliding by with ochre brown sails, riding high in the water like graceful swans. The diligent tugs tooting and fussy, pushing and shoving, eternally busy. Tramps and cruisers and men of war, coasters and colliers and steamers galore. Port and starboard, fore and aft, every conceivable waterway craft casting off and heaving to the pilot's hut with the tide times on view, regettas and pennants and flags are blowing, never endingly coming and going watermen, merchantmen rowing and rowing, straining backs and muscles a quiver, dogget men too, the pride of the river, the coal, the grain and the flour mill, Fraser's Pond and Bunker's Hill, the cinder path, the wreck, the terries, the seaman's home, picking blackberries, the Ritz, the Rialto, the Oxford, the Rex, the locomotive, Sunday school texts, the cobbler, the smithy, the disinfect can, the sea scouts, the sawmills, the school board man, Frank's Park fireworks, calendar's band, tightly packed in the small bandstand, the betting slips, the registrar, the library museum, the four ale bar, little boys fishing, with tiddlers in jar. The rose and crown on the Wheatley arms, gypsy weddings, the crossing of palms, St. Fidelis, 
Bob the Devil, running round tombstones in the old churchyard to ward off evil, the wicked gates of the level crossings. Swiftly, swiftly, paper and pen, put down the words and remember them. Gone are the cobbles, the alleys, the paths, the trams, the prams, the open air bars, Bry Brothers, Linwoods, the Salvation Army on Burton's Corner every Sunday, the gutters, the shutters, the home and colonial, the world stores, the maypole, the neatly professional patting of butter with spatulas wooden, kippers for tea, faggots, peas pudding, the fibro, selfs, penton and deans, shrimps and cockles and coffee beans, coal from Clark's, hats from Betty's, Starkies and Randall's printing presses, the local paper done on the spot, gammon from Davis, the wet fish shop. The hub of it all was Mitchell's store, the very core of the town, with personal assistance, yards of material measured with care, the buttons, the cottons, the crimping of hair, second-hand furniture round the corner, three brass balls if you wanted to pawn a thing or two, the knacker's yard, the late-night final, the laundry, the dairy, the men's urinal, checks of tin from the co-op stores, mint smiths, dales, and pails of manure, yours for the taking, barber's poles, grooms, and the smell of baking. It was always an honourable, vulnerable town. That could be the reason for knocking it down. Where a major redevelopment plan awaits approval of the town's largest store stands in. Tear out its character, flatten its face. We'll soon think of something to put in its place. Never mind what and never mind where. Move it around a bit, up in the air. Let's have some changes, let's have some go. What were we putting here? Someone must know. And so it went on, and on and on, until all that we knew of old Iris had gone. It took them some time to take it apart, Dying by stages, a work of art, you might say, in a way. All that was good was whittled away, and all that was bad was left to decay of its own accord. I could write more, but I've gone on too long. Progress, we know, has got to go on. But why did it happen, and where did it start? We're left with a town without a heart. Not better, but worse than we had before. There's very few left who remember it now. The new generation could not really care about something they never would know or share. Sadly, sadly, read it through. The ones who recall it all, you and you, the ones who grew up with me when I was small, Born here, and taught here, and worked here. You know what I'm writing of. You understand. And if you've a moment or two in hand, go down by the river. Yes, it's still there. And stand and share with me dog-eared regrets for the used-to-be of the rough little, gruff little eerie we knew. And read to yourself this obituary.